Hi, uh, welcome to this video on adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing using decimals. Alright, uh, before we start this, if you want to pause the video and take down these notes, these are on adding and subtracting, this one is on multiplying, and then we've got some notes on division of fractions here. On division of fractions, divisions of decimals. Um, also, if you haven't had a look at working with number, so um, adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing, um, using whole numbers, um, I suggest you find a video, perhaps have a look at one of my previous videos, or have a look on YouTube or Khan Academy, uh, pick something up there, because I'm going to do um, some methods that will have come up when you do that. Alright, so, um, assuming you've taken these notes down, let's continue on. So, uh, when we add and subtract decimals, um, if, I, if I think of, of a number, uh, or of a sum, let's say uh, 2.51 plus... Um, six point, I don't know, let's say uh, six point three eight, um, <clears throat> and then we'll say we'll make one large sum, subtract um, two point uh, five. Uh, it's not like that. Let's make that a four um, five uh, seven, something like that. Um, if we have a sum like that, the best way that I do this, or the best way that I can do this is through uh, multiplying, uh, not multiplying, through simply using column method. But what I have to be aware of is that sometimes I have to be careful of where my decimal actually is. Um, yeah, uh, let me see if I... 25, 7, 8, uh, put in a 1 there, and put in a 5 there. Alright, so... Um, in this case, I'm going to add these first. I'm going to add these first. Let's make that top. All right. Um, so I've got 12.515, and I have to make sure that I'm adding up, but that my columns start at the decimal point. So if I put my decimal point for this one, I've got a six just to the left, and then three, four, one. Right. So if I'm adding these up. It's fine now because my units are up, up underneath each other, my tenths, my hundredths, my thousandths, they're all lined up. Um, so if I add this up, now it becomes pretty easy. That's a six, that's a five, that gives me eight. Two and six make eight, and a one there. Now, obviously, in this gap here, we know it's a zero. Um, just like if there was a gap here, if there hadn't been a one, I'd put a little zero in there. Um, that's what we call a placeholder. And I always recommend putting them in. I always recommend putting them in um, because it'll stop making mistakes in the long run. All right. If I now move this up here, so I've got 18.856. If I now want to subtract from that, I've got to do exactly the same thing. I have to line up from the decimal. So I've got a 5 on this side. I've got a 2 on that side. Um, Oh, this is, let's actually make that a 1. Sorry, my apologies, I know I keep changing this, but it's the, the learning that can go along with it. Um, Alright, uh, so now I'm going to subtract that from this. So I have um, on the right hand side 7 and 8, and over here I'm just going to put in a little 0, okay, just to remind me. Alright, so 6 take away 0, well, that leaves me with 6. I can't take away. Um, 8 from 5. I'm going to need to um, decompose this unit here. So that becomes a 7, and I carry across um, my uh, decomposed tenths of the hundredths column. So I have 15 hundredths there, take away 8 hundredths, and that leaves me with uh, 7 hundredths in that column. 7 take away 7 is 0. 18, or 8 take away 5 is 3. 1 take away 1 is 0. And I write it. Right, so I end up with 3.076 for that. Okay, so the key here, you must line up your decimals. If you don't line up your decimals, you're going to end up going wrong. I very often see um, something like this. In this case, it's written 12.515, and someone is doing this, and, and then I get, oh, I get a horrific answer. I even get answers with two decimals in them. You know, it's, oh, dreadful, 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 dreadful. Um, so please make sure you are lining up your, your, your decimals. It will make your lives a lot easier. Okay, multiplying. <clears throat> Key with multiplying is firstly you need to be able to multiply 
um, using short or long multiplication. Okay, so if you can't do that, please check the video on, on how to do that. Um, let's say I have 0 0.6 times by, oh no, let's say 0 0.2, let's do, let's do the easy one first, 0 0.2 times 1.4. Okay, now I could multiply this quite easily if it was 2 times 14. That would make my life so much easier because I could do that in my head, 28, lovely. But it's not 2 times 14, is it? What if I could make it that? What do I have to do to that to get to the 2? And what do I have to do to that to get to the 14? Pretty simply, I'd simply have to times that by 10 and times that by 10. In other words, I've times this whole side of my equal side, I've times it by a total of 100. Because times 10 times 10 is the same as times it by 100. So that means that this answer here is 100 times too big. Which means that I'm going to have to divide by 100 to return it to its normal or correct answer. So divide by 100, we simply hop our decimal back two points. Decimal technique doesn't move with the number that moves, but we look, it looks like that. And so I end up with 0 0.28. So 0 0.28 is the answer to 0 0.2 times 1.4. But here's something that I find very curious. If we count the number of decimals in the question, or the decimal places at least, it's the same on that side as well. Alright, so let's see if we can do that with another problem, if it also works out like that. Alright, let's just do it down here. Let's have uh, 0 0.6 times 0 0.35. Alright, now I could do 6 times 35, and it might take me a bit of time. But if I just pretend it's 6 times 35, and 6 times 35 um, is 6 times 5 times 7, okay, which gives me 210. Um, <clears throat> that obviously isn't the answer to 0.6 times 0.35. Okay? But if I follow this principle, I've got 1, 2, 3 decimal places in my question. So therefore I should have one, two, three decimal places in my answer. So my answer is actually 0 0.21. Right, so say that again. I've got one, two, three spaces in my question. All I'm doing here is I'm counting back one, two, three, the same number of decimal places to get to there. And what I'm actually doing here is I'm realizing that I would have multiplied that by 10 and I would have multiplied that by 100. And then, so therefore, I had to have divided this by a thousand, which is three decimal parts. So that's why I can do this. Right? And if we just double check ourselves, make sure that I am correct. So 6 times 34 gives me 210. And so 0 0.6 times 0.35 is going to give me 0 0.21. Okay. So multiplying my decimals, the key here, treat them as whole numbers. Okay, treat them as whole numbers and put the decimals back in. However many decimals you have in the question, that's how many decimal places you have in the question, that's how many decimal places you have in your answer. Alright, division now. Now division is probably the most tricky. Um, but, in a way, as long as you are okay with fractions, and I don't mean difficult fractions, adding and subtracting, I simply mean um, equivalent fractions. As long as you're okay with equivalent fractions, you should be okay with decimals, uh, with dividing decimals. And I'll show you what I mean. 6 divided by 10. Okay, you're right that this is the same as 6 divided by 10. I'm hoping so. Well, 6 divided by 10 is the same as 60 divided by 100. Because all I did is I multiplied the top and the bottom by 10. And what I do to the bottom, I do to what I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. Numerator and denominator there. Likewise, I could say that 600 is the same, uh, sorry, 60 over 100 is the same as 600 over 1,000. Right? I could say that this is the same as. Um, as 3 over 5, yes. And, and as long as what I'm doing to the top and as long as what I'm doing to the top, I am doing to the bottom. As long as what I'm doing to the numerator, I'm doing to, to the denominator, I'm not changing what the fraction actually means. I'm not changing its value. Alright, we call that maintaining the divisibility. Right? Divisibility hasn't changed, it's still equal there. So we can apply that to division of fractions. Alright, so let's say I had 2.4 divided by, I 
and I'd say 1.2. If I set this up as a fraction, 2.4 over 1.2, that becomes 24 over 12. The way I got there, I just multiplied that by 10, and that by 10. 24 divided by 12, that's easy, 2. So the answer to this is 2. Please don't change that answer. I see this happening a lot. People get confused between this and multiplying. Because in multiplying, we have to undo what we've done. I don't have to undo what I've done, because this is the same as that. It's equal to it. All right? So I don't need to alter 2 once I get I don't need to go and say, okay, well then, therefore it must be 0 0.2, because I've had one death, or 0 0.02. People get confused. Just leave that as it is in division. So that is simply 2. All right? Let's try another one. Uh, let's have, and we'll do quite a complicated one, I've actually written one down here. Uh, let's have uh, 3, 6, 1.2 divided by 0 0.12. Alright, let's set this up. 3, 6, 1.2 over 0 0.12. Alright, so that's going to become 3, 6, 1, 2 over, and I've simply multiplied this by 10, so I can only multiply that by 10. 0. Point, oh, sorry. And that now becomes 1.2. Now please note, I can't change that into 12. I can't do that. If I do that, if I change that into 12, I have to, because I've moved my decimal two spaces, in other words, I times it by 100, I have to then multiply the top by 100. Okay? So if I want to go straight from that step to that step, I've moved this decimal two spaces, I must do the same to the top. What I do to the bottom, I must do to the top, and vice versa. Right? So because my numerator has got a hundred times bigger, my, denom uh, my denominator has got a hundred times bigger, my numerator must get a hundred times bigger as well. Okay. Right, now from this point here, I can do a whole bunch of things. Uh, let's just move this up here so I get a little bit more space. 3, 6, 1, 2, 0, 12. I can do a whole bunch of things from here. I could divide through by 2 to get it over 6. And then I could divide through by 3 to get it over some, over, uh, over 2. Now, I, I could do a whole bunch of things. I could simplify my fraction. Or, which is what I'm going to do, I can simply go straight from here into a short division sum. We set up our stuff. 3, 6, 1, 2, 0. Well, now it seems quite difficult. Let's have a go. 12 into 3 doesn't go, so we leave it blank. 12 into 36, well, I know that goes 3 times. Any remainder? No. Okay. 12 into 1 doesn't go, so I put a 0 now to start at the sum. Alright, I've carried that 1. 12 into 12, well, I know that goes once. 12 into 0 doesn't go. No remainder. Therefore, that is equal to 3, 0, 1, 0. Okay. In other words, 0 0.12 goes into 361.2 3,010 times. Okay, and that's quite a difficult sum here. But what you've got to remember is that these have to be the same. They have to be the same. They didn't have to be the same in multiplication, but because we are trying to maintain this divisibility, because we're trying to work with equivalent fractions, right? Because we're doing that. You have to be multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by the same amount. And when you get your answer, like I have here, leave it alone. Don't undo the great work that you've been doing by confusing it with multiplication. All right, so that's it for me. I've got a couple of questions for you to have a look at. All right, there we go. We've got four questions on there. If you want to pause, have a go, um, and I will show you, uh, show you all the answers in a moment. All right, so assuming you've finished these, here we go. Start with answer number one, and again here, making sure that we're lining up our decimals, that's the key, right? For both of those, please make sure you are lining up the decimals. Uh, question three, again, I have done the timesing by ten, you didn't have to do that, you could have just looked at this and seen nine times twelve, 108, two decimal places in the question, therefore there must be two decimal places in the answer. Okay, if you did that, that's perfect, all right? And then the last one, question three, again, we set it up as a fraction. I had to multiply this one by 100, so I must multiply this one by 100, or if you think of it, I hop this decimal two spaces, so I have to hop this one as well, all right? What I do to the numerator, I must do, do, do to the denominator. So now I've got 2450 over 5, and I just set that up as a normal bus stop method, 
fraction, or a bus stop uh, division sum. Here we go. And remember, leave your answer. All right, so 24.5 divided by 0 0.05 is 490. Don't undo the good work that you've done. All right, I hope you got those four. If you didn't, uh, possibly have another look through this, um, revise where you went wrong, and have a look at perhaps on Khan Academy or on YouTube for anything else there. All right, that's it for me. Cheers.